Hey everyone, Obsidian is like an operating system for personal knowledge management. And as for operating systems, for Obsidian as well, there are many different applications that you can run on your operating system. These applications in Obsidian are called plugins. There are 27 core plugins and 564 community plugins available in the plugin store. Plus, there are dozens of plugins that are not yet in the store, but are also available. It can be daunting to choose from all of these. In today's video, I want to show you the 16 community plugins and the 12 core plugins that I use on a daily basis. I actually have no other plugin enabled in my Obsidian Vault. So let's get started. Looking at the community plugins, the first one I want to draw your attention to is Advanced Tables. The Advanced Tables plugin helps you create markdown tables. So let me show you how it works. For example, if I want to create this simple table of an ID and a name, if I create the header row and press enter, that's when Advanced Tables jumps into action and you can see it immediately created a nice markdown table for me. Now I can start to write the data. And again, you didn't see, I pressed tab and I moved to the next column and then I can just simply uh, type in the name of the person, press tab again, and automatically the table is sized so that it looks good. Advanced Tables also comes with this toolbar of various table actions, which makes it simply very powerful. Then next on the list is the Annotator plugin. The Annotator plugin is excellent if you're annotating PDF documents. So for example, here's the Wardley Maps literature notes that I took, and you can see that I have my notes or my highlights here, and I can jump to the part of the text there I have my highlight. Annotator can work with EPUB files as well as with PDF documents, and in the background, this is also a markdown document. It is not a very nice looking markdown document. So if you look at this, this looks quite ugly, but in preview mode, you will see all your highlights and your notes, and that makes it quite practical. If I read a PDF, I prefer the annotator plugin. Next on my list is the customizable page header and title bar plugin. This is a very simple plugin. It allows you to add custom buttons to the header of your page. For example, I have this button here to open the insert template model, which is a window in Templator where I can choose the template to insert. On a desktop, I don't need this because I can execute this with a quick keyboard command. But on my iPad and on my phone, having this button at the top of my page makes a huge difference. It is very easy to configure these buttons. All you need to do is you need to set up the command to execute and set the icon that you want to use. An excellent plugin. The next one on the list is Obsidian Data View. Now, the Excalibrain plugin that we will talk about right after this is based partly on data view tags or data view fields. I want to show you how I use data view on the daily basis. And for that, I'm going to open my demo vault. What you see here, I also have a video on this is a meeting note where I was talking to Rolly, the steamroller. And in the meeting, we talked about an action that involved Muck, the dumb truck, and Project A. Now, what you see here is if I navigate to Muck's page, here I can see all the different tasks listed where Muck's name appeared. This is generated with a very simple data view query. You can see it here. All I do is I filter tasks and I look for tasks that are not 
completed and where the text of the task includes the name of the file which is mox name. I have this snippet in all of my templates. So for example, if I open my project template as well, I can see all the actions that are relevant to project A. I find this an extremely simple yet super powerful way to see the actions in the context where I want to use them. And this is all enabled by DataView. Next on the list is the Excolibrain plugin and you can see Excolibrain in action right here. This is a graph view that gives you a better overview of the relationships of the various nodes or pages in your Obsidian Vault. Continuing on, I use Excolidraw on a daily basis. I won't talk about it today because I have so many videos on the subject. I recommend you watch some of them and you'll see how I use Excolidraw. But the next one, Hotkey for Templates, is an interesting one. This allows you to add a hotkey to a template. So for example, if we come back to my meeting notes example, let's say that I want to I want to record a meeting note with, say, for example, I'm meeting with Muck. What I do is I type in, I have a script for this. If I have a link right here, I have a shortcut, Control M, that I want a meeting. And, whoops, and when I press Control M, then automatically Muck's page is opened. I have this section with today's date. I can take notes here and when I return to my daily notes page I can see that I had a meeting with Muck and I can see the notes that I took on that day. And all this does is this executes a templator script. If you look in settings then here's the hotkey for templates settings and it lists all my different templates and here I chose my meeting note template. I activated it and from then on, under hotkeys, I can find meeting note here and I can add my shortcut button to it. So next on the list is the hover editor. And this is a really super powerful plugin. Let me show you how you can convert the Excolibrain pane into a hover editor. If I click on more options right here, I can click convert to hover editor. And with that, this is now converted into this floating window that I can collapse, I can open up, I can make full screen, I can minimize again. This is simply wonderful. You can do this also by hovering any of your notes here. So for example, if I hover my advanced tables note here and hold down the control key, then you can see this was opened up like this. I can even edit this document. So if I click the edit right here, I can edit in the window. And all this is while my original page stays in place. This is a wonderful plugin. So next on the list is the Kanban board. And my example of the Kanban board is the uh, map of content that I created for my YouTube channel. And this is, you can see it takes a bit of time to load because of the many pictures, but this is the workflow where I manage my video ideas and you can see that we are actually still only recording this video but this is how I use the compound board. You can use it for many different tasks. This is the way I use the board. So going back to the community plugins list, the next one on the list is map view and let me show you map view. This is excellent when you want to navigate your notes 
based on the location. So for example, if now I zoom in here, I can find notes. Uh, let's see uh, what these notes are right here. So here's a note. This note is the holiday apartment where he spent a week last summer in the Alps. And what map view allows you to do is it allows you to search and find your documents based on geographical locations. So continuing on, the next on the list is BRAT. BRAT stands for the Beta Reviewers Auto Update Tester. This is a utility plugin that helps you install and update various beta plugins. For example, Excalibrain is currently only available via Brat, and Brat makes it extremely simple to download, install, and update these plugins from GitHub. So continuing on, next one is the Jump to Date plugin. Again, a very simple plugin but very practical jump to date adds a calendar view to your vault and if you click a date in the calendar it will open the daily page or daily notes page for that day this makes it easy to navigate your daily notes in your vault then the recent file plugin adds a view here called the recent files and this is simply a historical list of all the files that you've opened and sometimes it's easier to find i remember i was looking at this couple of files ago i want to find where it was and i most often use this view to find files that i was working on and that i want to reopen then the tag wrangler is an absolute must if you are gardening in your vault and if you want to clean up the tags that you have created. It adds some functionality to the tag pane and you can right click on the various tags and you have all sorts of uh, functions here. So primarily you can rename these tags and that helps you sort them into folders or it helps you just standardize the naming that you use for tags. And finally on the list I have Templater and Templater is the basic automation tool for Obsidian. There's another one called Quick Add that I sometimes used but frankly uh, recently over the past couple of months I've been exclusively using Templater for my scripts and let me just show you here in Templator. I have lots of templates. For example, I have my daily notes template. I have all sorts of page templates for projects, for systems, for people, for blogs, for videos, whatever. And also I have some automation like my meeting notes template or like my automation to create a new video added to the Kanban board and to create the storyboard and the folders for it. These are all uh, scripts. Let me show you, for example, this YouTube create script, which yes, it's a script, so it is not so very nice looking. But uh, what this does is a whole bunch of automation. I have a separate video on this, uh, which you might want to check out uh, if you're interested. So then let's turn to our core plugins. So the core plugins I use are backlinks and backlinks you can find right here. And backlinks, let's just look at backlinks. Backlinks are the pages that link to my page and having this list here is quite practical. Then I have the common palette activated. So that's control P. And this is how I typically look for actions that I can execute in Obsidian. For example, if I look at the Excolid Draw actions, you can see all the different Excolid Draw actions listed here. Then the daily notes. 
I use the daily notes template in conjunction with templater and the daily notes simply defines the file name and the location for my daily notes page. The file explorer is the explorer here on the left, which is I think a very basic and must have feature. The note composer helps me organize notes. For example, I can merge a file with another file. It helps me rearrange the documents I have in my vault. I use it quite frequently. The open in default app plugin will open Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or whatever other documents you have added to your vault in the respective applications. The outgoing links is similar to the backlinks. The difference is that these are all the links that are on the page. And so it's a helpful list. In this case, because I have a list here as well, the difference is not so much, but when you have a body of text in your central pane and then you have the list of links, that is quite uh, handy and that gives you a quick access to those links. Then Quick Switcher adds the Control O function where you can quickly type in the title of a document and you can open that document in the active pane. This is a very fast way of navigating to documents in the vault. Search is the Obsidian search right here. Uh, there are a couple of comments. I actually recommend going online and reading about the search commands because there are more than what you can see here. For example, you can search for tasks as well. Obsidian search is quite powerful. If you learn the syntax, it can give you access to your files very quickly. Then the start plugin simply adds a favorites list here and I use this as a quick access to some of the pages that I frequently open. And then there are two more here, the tag pane, which is right here on the right hand side. And this gives us a navigation through our tags. You can also see the number of documents in each of the tags and you can also navigate the tags uh, in hierarchy if they are hierarchical tags. And finally, Obsidian Sync is a must have if you're using Obsidian on multiple devices. I use Obsidian on two PCs, a phone and an iPad, and Obsidian Sync just simply takes care of having my documents at my fingertips on whichever device I use Obsidian on. Obsidian Sync keeps one year worth of backup. So if anything happens to your files, you can always go into the sync settings and find your lost files and you can restore to previous versions. It is, it, it's been a lifesaver for me a number of times and I'm sure that uh, it will be for you as well. So I highly recommend getting an Obsidian Sync subscription. So that completes the walkthrough of the 16 community plugins and the 12 core plugins I use every day. I hope you found this quick walkthrough helpful and please let me know in the comments if there are some other plugins that you use and you think would benefit my workflow as well or you think that others should know about as well as if you have questions or if you would like me to create a more detailed video on any of these, let me know which one you'd like and I'm happy to do that. Thank you.